Hi everyone. So today I want to film a Q&A video. I can't believe it's the end of the month again. I mean, it just was, wasn't it? Uh, just amazing how time flies. But today I'm here in my shed. Uh, we have a beautiful summer, late summer, sadly, day here in Ohio. And the weather is just perfect. It actually feels a bit like fall, just a little bit chilly this morning, but beautiful. So out here in my shed, I have lots of privacy. I don't really have to worry about anyone interrupting me, which is always good during a Q&A, especially. Uh, Pebbles was out and about, so she might join me. I have a sweet agave and jade candle burning in my terrarium. Not sure can you see that on the screen or not, but um, I just lit it and I already smell it. It smells really good. Um, it is one of the candles that is on sale right now. I talked about it in my last video. Uh, we still have some left over. Some of them are sold out, but there's still some there. So make sure to check that out on the Etsy shop. 30% off right now. Uh, we're creating space basically for fall and Christmas candles. I can't wait. Can't believe I'm even saying that because I usually I'm not ready for fall. But for some reason this year, I feel, I kind of feel it. So I guess I got all rambly there. Let's get into the Q&A video. The first questions are from last month's Q&A. Emerald says, hi Mary, would you consider German schmear on the brick portion of your home? And Pebbles did decide to join us. I've seen the finished results on Chip and Joanna Gaines show Fixer Upper. It looks amazing. It would take a lot of work, of course, but the end result would be so worth it. I debated to not address this question, being that I talked about it before on my Q&As, but maybe some of you missed it. I've been wanting to paint the brick part of our house, and it's kind of scary. Usually I'm, you know, I paint anything, as you guys know, but um, it is just a bit more risky, I guess you could say, to paint the brick of a house because you probably can't, well, you can't ever get it back to how it was. And I think I would probably be safe with like a German schmear or a whitewash of some sort. I feel if I try for that old English brick look, you know, some dark showing through and then kind of a whitewash, if I wouldn't like it, I could always paint it white. And then if I wouldn't like the white, I guess I could always paint it, you know, a dark color. But if you go and just paint something dark, you can never go back to light again. Um, it's just, yeah, I'm not sure at this point what I'll do. I'll really have to think it over, but I do like this idea, and I've seen videos on this, you know, using that German schmear. So we'll see. Uh, Sarah Brunswald says, it's getting really exciting as you get closer and closer to finishing your cottages. Are you nearing a time to open them for business? Will, will they be open year-round? Uh, yes, they will be open year-round, and yes, they are almost finished. Actually, the inside, I could say, is pretty much finished. Um, I'm still furnishing a few things, uh, furniture pieces and decorations and such. But I gotta say, our outside is the holdup. We've had such a hard time getting our excavator to come and do the final grade, and he's also gonna do the hydro seeding, putting the grass in, and not meaning to complain. You know, he's done a good job, and I realize they're busy. We're not the only people that are waiting for him to come, I'm sure. But I, yeah, it's almost hard on patience, especially if you have something like this where you wanna open it as soon as possible. And especially here in our area, our really busy season is in the fall. And I know it's always uh, in need of, you know, there's always a need out there for places to stay. Our goal right now is the end of September. So we're just hoping uh, to have it open by then or maybe even before. And I'll make sure to keep you guys updated. I know a lot of you are waiting on that opening date, maybe want to schedule, which I really appreciate. I can't wait to have them open and actually have people there. Um, that'll be the fun part. But definitely keep you guys updated on that. I do some on Instagram, not recently. Gotta say, I've been so busy with other things. I don't even get around to posting reels and, and making posts on Instagram. I'm terrible with that, but um, I wanted to do an update soon here on kind of how we're going with them or where we're going with them and just uh, keep you guys in the loop. Uh, Donna Friend says, are you and your husband planning on spending a few nights in your cottages by, to try them out before you open them to the public? We are definitely talking about doing that. We thought even we'd let the boys have the one cottage and John and I would have the other one for one night just to kind of make sure everything's okay and working and uh, it would just be fun to, to actually be there uh, more than just, you know, be there to work, I guess. Mary B says, I was wondering what YouTubers do you follow? Can you share a few of your favorites? Uh, yes, I can. I don't actually follow a lot of YouTubers. It's probably kind of weird here. I have my own channel and I don't really just watch a whole lot, but um, it's mostly just not taking the time to do it. Um, I always think eventually I have all these, like some of you guys sometimes tell me of people and I have other friends that recommend, you know, different YouTubers and I always have this mental list. I think, you know, someday I'll look them up and start following them. But at this point, I just have not even a handful that I watch on a regular basis. 
and I've talked about her before, but Garden Answer, I watch Laura all the time, and even this summer I slacked with that. I didn't um, get all of her videos, you know, I didn't watch all of them. I recently really enjoyed her Q&A with her mom. I don't know, I know a lot of you guys watch her too, but uh, she is just the sweetest person. Well, both of them are, and it's just so much fun to watch them together. And I just felt like I learned so much about gardening, uh, just hearing their advice. And um, I really do like Laura's Q&As, even if I don't, like during the summer, like I said, I don't always get to watch every video. I'm just too busy with, you know, doing other things. And I think if I watch the Q&As, sometimes I hear about a certain video that kind of gets my attention, then, then I'll go back and watch that one. But um, it's just a great way to kind of keep everyone updated, I think. And that is on a separate channel in case you're you don't realize that but if you just follow garden answer you don't get the q a's i don't think that's on a separate uh, channel so you need to subscribe to that too but i also really like farmhouse on boone i've watched her for years and more recently i started watching katie carson she has royalty soaps um, i kind of started watching her when i wanted to learn how to make soap and i just am kind of hooked on her videos she's so funny i smile a lot when i watch them and just very motivating. She has an exuberance about her that just really gets you motivated. And the fourth one that comes to mind that I watch is Sean Cannell from Think Media. I don't watch all of their videos, but often uh, something will kind of pop out and I'll watch that one and I've learned a lot from them. They're really helpful when it comes to starting up a YouTube channel. But again, I know there's lots more out there that are really motivating and educational and just inspiring. Hopefully someday I'll have more time that I can actually indulge in YouTube. I think it's such a great platform, you know, that we can actually share just everyday people, like common people, uh, just kind of share our tips and just, yeah, be a motivation to someone. Uh, the next question here is wondering, will there be a pond update? I apologize for not doing an update. Here I did these video series or a few of them where I, you know, treated the pond using the Pond Guy uh, products and I was really impressed with those products. Uh, still am, but we ran into an issue that is kind of beyond help I think because I did contact the pond guy about it and they even didn't really have a solution exactly for this but we have this green it's not algae but it's a different green scum can't even really you know scoop it out of the pond I can't really describe it I'll try to get some pictures and just you know flash them on here for you guys to see I did contact the pond guy and they did kind of an analysis just through pictures and they said it might actually be from fertilizers that are kind of mixed in you know runoff water that comes from you know area farms maybe here we'd get some of the water that you know if it rains of course it goes into their fields and from there ends up in our pond maybe and that's actually what it might be and there's really nothing you can do about it it just kind of takes time to eventually you know kind of take its course and maybe disappear hopefully and it doesn't really seem to help like we've had lots of rain i always thought maybe the more rain you know we'd get more fresh water in there but that doesn't seem to help uh, so we're kind of at our wits end and that's some of the reason that I haven't really done a pond update like I feel um, I you know love to show the muck away and the clear packs that I you know the treatment that I was doing with the pond it actually made a difference like we even saw we have more depth to our pond um, it took some of the muck away uh, the past couple years you know I've been using the pond guy treatments I'd still recommend that because it did do a good job with our pond and then we have the aeration system uh, that's really helped with keeping our fish healthy. I think really what the pond needs is just to be redone. You know how people do that maybe every 20 or so years they'll just kind of re redig it and uh, kind of scoop out all of the muck and just kind of start over with it, restock with fish and all that. So we're talking about that right now it's kind of on the back burner honestly but uh, eventually we want to do that. We just want to create a beautiful habitat down there for our fish and frogs and all the other little critters that enjoy the pond. Uh, April Wine says, a favorite movie of all time. Honestly, I'm not really a movie person. I'm more of a TV show. I like like episodes where they kind of go on and on instead of just you know one movie. But um, some that come to mind, I always like The Patriot. I should watch it again. I haven't watched it in a couple years, but that's Mel Gibson. It's a really good movie. And I like some westerns like Wyatt Earp and Tombstone and uh, and then some you know Titanic I watched that years ago that's a really good movie it's really sad though I'm not sure that I just have the urge to watch it again but I guess I you know I appreciate a good movie but again I probably just prefer a TV show favorite TV shows are of course you know Friends and Seinfeld you know who doesn't like those or if you ask me anyway and I also love the old Magnum PI I like the new one too I started watching that one too but 
I've watched that numerous times where Tom Selleck is Thomas Magnum. And then I also like some of the historical TV shows like Downton Abbey and Poldark, a few that come to mind. And the bottom comment from that video is M. Ware saying, so it's okay to work on Sundays in your religion. Uh, no, you won't see too much of that in this area. Um, I try to avoid it too. Not that there's not small things you sometimes have to do, but I think this last Q&A video may have gone live on a Sunday. Uh, you know, with YouTube, I can um, upload as many videos as I want and then schedule them to go live on a certain date. So that's probably what, what brought uh, this question. Uh, the next questions are from that cooking video that I had done. And before going on here, I wanted to say there's so many kind, nice comments in my comment section here on YouTube. You don't believe how motivating and inspiring and encouraging that is to me. I just feel like I don't say enough about that. Um, I don't always read every single comment. Like I unfortunately can't, but I, I will often you know read through them just to be, again, encouraged. Um, it's just amazing how many kind people are out there. So thank you for that. Um, there's, you know, I've had comments where I've gotten tears over and I've had comments where I, you know, laughed out loud. It's just, there's so much in our, in my comment section. So if you're ever wanting some more tips or just inspiration, just read the comments. It's, it's pretty amazing to me. I really appreciate that. The first question here is Dawn saying, when will the Christmas candles be available? Um, I usually don't have those available until probably the end of or mid-October maybe. I'm usually not one to just go really early with seasonal things. I probably should do more of that, but right now we're really thinking fall candles, so those listings will probably be up soon here. But yeah, as far as Christmas candles, probably October. Leanne Coleman says, did you say shortening for the filling? Uh, yeah, I do have a shortening that I use for cookie filling. And it is, I think, Spectrum brand. It's an organic uh, vegetable shortening. I'll try to put a picture of it on the screen here. It is rather pricey, I'll warn you. But for me, I don't use a lot of shortening, so it's worth it to me to just get a little bucket of that. And that usually lasts for a half a year or more. Uh, Laura Green says, the cookies look like whoopie pies. Are they a similar recipe? Uh, no, they're not. They're actually quite different from, from whoopie pies. Probably a lot simpler. Um, they're really soft and just a different texture even. I have a comment here, it's not really a question, but it's saying, Mary, you didn't wear an apron in any of those segments. And here I talked about the aprons we have available for the Etsy shop, and I wasn't even really wearing one when I was doing the actual cooking, but um, I'll kind of explain that. Often when we plan a vacation, I need to make videos in advance, which I want to. It's not that I need to, but I, I want to. And then I'll use some of my cooking that I do every day, film that, and kind of use that, you know, put that all together in a video. And honestly, I don't wear an apron every time I work in the kitchen. Like, I cook every day, and I don't always grab my apron. I guess I should, but uh, the only time I do is probably when I'm, you know, if I'm wanting to go somewhere and I don't want to be dirty at all, you know, with um, whatever you get dirty with when you're cooking. But uh, that's probably one time I'll wear them. And the other time I'll wear an apron is if I'm doing lots of food prep in the kitchen, maybe for a half a day or more, and I just, you know, like to have a place to dry my hands. But I guess that's why I wasn't really wearing one in the video, because I was just doing my regular cooking, you know, everyday cooking. And the bottom comment from that video is James Swanson saying, you are wasting water peeling the potatoes. Um, I kind of smiled when I saw that, because it reminded me of my dad for some reason, because he'd always kind of grumble when we, you know, growing up, we'd have the water running too long. And it was often due to the fact that we, we always had spring water here, like it's our, our, some of our water in our house is still spring water, where it, it runs into a cistern, like out of the ground into a cistern. From there, we have a pump that pumps it into our house. And the water that I was using in the sink that day is ironically not the spring water, so I shouldn't have been wasting it. I agree, it is city water that I was using there, but uh, back in the day when we did have the spring water, you know, coming out of that kitchen faucet, uh, and it was kind of dry outside, like we hadn't had rain in a while, and Dad would really grumble about it if we'd used too much water. Like we were trained to really watch for that if we were in a dry spell to, you know, really not waste water. But And we have an overflow for our cistern, which is actually the pond in the front of our house. So as long as that pond is running, you know, that's already kind of wasting away, I guess you could say, but I never feel bad about having water running when I see that the pond is running, because I know that's, you know, excess water. We have plenty of water, but again, for that kitchen faucet, we do have the city water, because we had our spring tested. It wasn't safe anymore, so we actually switched some of our water around to city water, and I guess it's just habit that I had that running, so I, I better watch for that. Uh, the next questions are from the painted cabinet video. It's where I, or John and I, painted uh, Brian and Emily's kitchen cabinets. They were that orangish oak and 
Uh, we made them white. And Gail Rhodes says, your niece has a beautiful home. I love watching you and John work the assembly line on those cabinets. Was there a way to know which cabinet door went back to where it came from? Good question. Uh, they actually had them marked uh, in those cabinet doors. There were uh, kind of cut out circles, holes where the hinges would lock in. And they put the number of the door. They had their own system, probably, you know, the top doors and then the maybe T for top and B for bottom. And then they numbered them from, you know, one to whatever number they had. Now, that's how I used to do it. I assume that's probably how they did it too. But so they had it written in that hole and covered it with masking tape so that it wouldn't get painted over. And then once, you know, they were ready to hang them, they, of course, just removed the tape and they could see where the door went. And it's surprisingly not that hard, you know, if you have a kitchen where you're not really able to write anything on the doors. I've done kitchens like that where the hinge was different, like you weren't able to, there wasn't really a spot to, to write it on. And I, it's really not that hard to figure it out once you're ready to, you know, put them back on. Like often, you know, the doors have, you know, hinges on a certain side, so you know, you know, this left hinge door won't fit in this right hinge door opening and they're fairly different, you know, from each other, like the doors, so it's usually you can kind of figure it out, you know, where they go. It's not, it's not really that hard. Uh, the next question here is N. Allen asking, uh, I have never used the clear wax. Is this something that gets reapplied, and if so, how often? Um, I would almost think for cabinet doors, I've never reapplied it, to answer your question. I've never done that, like I've just put it on, you know, one time. But at the same time, it hasn't been that long since I started doing that. It would have been a little over a year now that I did my other niece, Catherine's, their kitchen using the Annie Sloan Clear Wax for the first time. And I, I haven't redone them, you know, since. But if I think about pieces of furniture that I've been using Annie Sloan Clear Wax with, I haven't ever, you know, reapplied it on furniture. I just feel like a surface that is, you know, vertical like that is not going to get, like it's not really going to come off like it would maybe for... Uh, let's say our countertops, my kitchen countertops, I use Annie Sloan Clear Wax and I have now previously once reapplied it just to give it a fresh new, I just felt like it needed uh, the wax again and of course that surface gets wiped you know numerous times a day and it gets worked on and um, it gets lots of use so definitely like a countertop, it kind of depends on your surface I guess to answer the question but I'm sure it would never hurt to reapply wax and again it's so easy it doesn't take long and um, it just makes everything look so nice and fresh, but I definitely make sure to really clean up your surface before, you know, putting that wax on again for the second or third time, which I'm sure you would probably know that. Kendra Rankin says, so no need to sand or strip off the old stain before painting? Uh, no, not if you ask me. I hate stripping furniture. Um, it's probably one of my least favorite things to do. Um, I've rarely done it. I, I just shy away from it. I've even, honestly, I've probably had more issues with it where I tried to do that than if I just painted over an old finish. But there's definitely some steps you want to take to prepare your surface, of course, you know, before just painting over any finish. Uh, Krista Steele says, I love the transformation of this home, especially loved all the Christian signage. I thought your Etsy page might sell these, but I'm unable to find some that I like. Perhaps you could let us know how to purchase them. Um, I did ask Emily about this because I saw this question. I thought maybe they had gotten some as wedding gifts and she said no, most of those signs throughout her home she had gotten at Hobby Lobby. So there you go, one of our favorite stores, right? Uh, the next question here, MB labeled as LOL, so let's see what it says. Uh, Mama Olu, not sure am I pronouncing that correctly. Uh, great video, thank you. Will your nieces start their own YouTube channels? Probably not, that's probably why the LOL is there, but uh, you know, having a YouTube channel honestly is for me, it was kind of hard, like I'm still not entirely comfortable in front of the camera and just kind of putting myself out there. You know, most of my life I led a really private life, so this is just has been really different for me. But I of course like it well enough or I wouldn't be doing it. And I love the idea of inspiring people. Uh, that was my goal to begin with, was just, you know, sharing my projects and just hoping I could inspire someone to maybe do something similar or the same thing and just... Uh, see how much cheer it can bring into one's life, you know, just to maybe redo something. That was kind of, you know, why I started it. And then it ended up turning into an income, like a full-time income. I still don't know how that happened, but, uh, well, I know how it happened. You guys watch my videos, so thank you for that. But um, it's still, there's stuff that goes with that is, again, putting yourself out there. And it's just, it's not always easy. And I can, I totally don't blame anyone if they don't want a YouTube channel. Like, I totally get it, but... We've talked about it already. I know my sister and I have, you know, Marlene, she's talked, I've, I've told her she should have a YouTube channel. She's so good with, you know, gardening, and I know she could really uh, be 
you know, educational and just inspiring to people. And she does that through her Instagram some too, but uh, but she just doesn't want the, the filming part, which I totally don't blame her. Susie Pam says, do the young couples live on their family's land? How do these young couples afford a house when they are just starting out? Uh, wishing them good luck and happiness in their new home. Oh, that's sweet. Um, no, they actually rent from Brian's parents. So that's um, kind of nice for them, a starter home. I'm not sure would they ever get the opportunity to buy or not, but at this point they're just renting. And the bottom comment from that video is Kate Wade saying too many signs. So I guess it's not everybody's thing to have uh, encouraging words in their homes, which I totally get. We all have different tastes when it comes to, to decorating. Oh, I did want to address something that came up. Actually, I'll go back the question. Uh, it wasn't a question, but just a comment. And B put it in here and said, you might want to address. But Marilyn C says, Mary, I think you have a troll commenting under my last comment. That's not you, is it? I haven't been having issues with that, guys. I wanted, I thought about just putting a little short video out, just announcing it. Then I thought, no, I'll just address it in my next Q&A. But I would never, ever contact anyone through YouTube comments, just so you know. I do believe there was someone posing as me, probably stole my little profile picture. I'm sure it looked a bit blurry because it wouldn't have been the original. Use that as the little circle and, you know, of course, put in White Cottage Company. Anyone can do that. And then they posed as myself. And it is, of course, first of all, shocking to me how someone could do that. Like, first of all, who has time to do that? And why would you want to use someone else's, you know, reputation, something, something they may have worked hard to earn, you know, use that and try to gain from that. Like, to me, that's probably one of the biggest losers. I mean, that's just plain and simple how I feel about it. So never take that. If you ever see something from me that looks like it's from me on the YouTube comment section uh, guiding you to another site, uh, just don't even click on it. Uh, it might be a virus or... Uh, something, you know, just somebody trying to get money from you, just, yeah, stay away from that. Um, it's just so disappointing how people actually would do that, but it's just how it is, and I know, I know there's a lot worse things than that going on out there. It's not that I'm not aware of it, but I'm always still just kind of shocked how it just takes a certain person to be able to do that, I think. I'll stop raving about that now. Let's go to the summer vacation questions here. The first one is a Robin W. saying, how old are your boys? Kenny is 22. He will turn 23 soon here in a couple months. And Ephraim, the youngest, is 16. He just turned 16 in July, so he just got his license. And I just hope it kind of fizzes off, but we rarely see him. Like, he has so many places to be every evening, like after school, and um, he's just gone so much I yeah I just I actually miss him like he always used to be around and we'd you know throw frisbee in the yard or you know play games or just chat you know and he's not even around for that but hopefully it's just sort of a phase that will wear off soon but no I'm really I'm happy for him that he can get around now I know you know the freedom that he must feel and um, I want to trust that he'll be safe every time he goes somewhere uh, the next question here is Shandell Broyles. Probably messed that one up, but have you ever heard of the longest yard sale? I think it's coming up. Uh, yes, and I'd love to go one of these years. I really wish we could go this year. It's actually this coming weekend, and we did kind of talk about it, but again, too much stuff going on, and there's also a wedding that we are attending on Saturday, so it really wouldn't work, but um, it's called, if, I'm, if we're talking about the same thing here, it's uh, the old Lincoln Way garage sales. Um, it actually starts here in Ohio. It's not too far from here. And I think it goes all the way to, she says here, all through Tennessee. I'm not sure is that the same one or not, but I was thinking Illinois. But um, wouldn't that be fun? Just take like three days and just go garage sailing to your heart's content. Mary Carper says, who took care of Pebbles? Uh, she was really well taken care of. She was well fed, but I do know she missed me. Uh, she's really a... I don't want to say a people's cat because she doesn't like most people, but she really likes my lap, I guess. And uh, But Marlene and MB fed her all the time, so she did not lose an ounce while we were gone. Uh, Cheryl says, I think you've been hacked or are being impersonated. I guess I did address that. Uh, Jan says, we went to the peddler in Berlin and they said you weren't there anymore. Are, there, is there, are you in another space? Um, yeah, I had briefly spoken about that in a, maybe the other q and I'm not sure, but I ended up, yeah, going out of that line, and presently, I have the soap at Addie's. I've talked about that store, and I have that address down below in the description box if you're ever in the area and you want to try some soap, 
and right now we're having a hard time keeping it stocked. I mean, there's soap there, but kind of just our basic scents, which I think they're really good smelling, but it's probably, we have nothing swirled or nothing really extra special there, but um, it'll still be worth your time because they have lots of other neat things in that store. And then at the Walnut Creek Antique Mall, I do have some candles there at times, uh, not just a whole lot, but I'm presently thinking of trying to stock my candles somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Will I do it at Addie's or at the Walnut Creek Antique Mall? And presently we're doing a whole relabeling on our candles, and I really want to stock them somewhere in the area so that if you guys do come to Holmes County, you can get the candles and not have to pay that expensive shipping. And I wonder what you guys think. Should I just stock them there at Addie's? They told me I can. Like, I, I think, I mean, they're almost out of space. I almost feel bad, but I could stock some of them there. Or should I go with my booth? I say my booth. It's not really mine anymore, but I share it with Katie Mae. Um, should I stock them there at the Antique Mall? I think part of me thinks, you know, it would be nice to have them there with the soap, like at the same place, maybe more fitting. But I think also it could work at the Antique Mall. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think. Should I go with Addie's or the Antique Mall? Like, where would you guys want to go for them? This next question, I guess, isn't really a question. It's just a comment. I was so fascinated by this. I thought about trying it sometime, and I thought it would be a tip for you guys, too. But I was cleaning our vehicle before we left for vacation, and Gary says, instead of using a vacuum to clean your car, just open all the doors and blow it out with your leaf blower. I kind of smiled when I read that. Like, how genius is that? But is it? would it actually work? I mean, it kind of sounds, no offense, but it sounds like a guy to do that, you know, just, but it, it makes sense at the same time. I, I kind of, yeah, I want to try that. I guess here we always think we need to sweep up every little dirt and, you know, do it the right way, how we always did it. And this, to me, just kind of opened a whole new, yeah, I might try that sometime. Oh, I do believe the bottom comment from that video was the one about being hacked or impersonated. So I guess we, we did cover that one. And the next questions are from the secretary desk. Uh, the first one here is multiple questions from Beth Quarter. The first one is, as you began spray painting the left side of the desk in real time, you paused about a third way up. When you started again, this, the paint looked thinner. Did you adjust the pressure on your sprayer? Or was that just a shadow of the lighting? I would say I adjusted, I, right now I can't really think what I did, but I think I probably adjusted the either the the pressure or the the spray, like you can, make it you know spray wider or more narrow so maybe i did adjust the spray that would almost make more sense maybe it looked thinner because i may may have adjusted the width of it and did you only use one coat on the whole dresser uh, yes i did that is the bonus of spray painting versus brushing i know had i brushed that on or even rolled i would have done at least two if not three coats and with spray for some reason you can just kind of put it on there and as long as it doesn't get runny for you it'll um you know, one coat is usually enough. It's pretty cool. Also, does the crud cutter eliminate the need for a primer? I use that instead of, well, my, I should, no, I shouldn't say that. My primer, my paint has a primer in it already, so I guess I have the primer with my paint, but I always, I love using crud cutter to kind of prep my surface. It does dull it up a bit, and it really gets it nice and clean, too, and it's not a strong chemical smelling product. It's just um, I usually put it on pure, like on my rag, and kind of rub it in, and then rub it dry, and it's just, yeah, it's worked quite well. And she also says, P.S., I think the desk would look cute in a cottage, your home, or anywhere. We kind of had a change of plans when it came to our little media centers we were going to have in the cottages, so we thought, why not just use the island as the media center, being that we have um, an outlet on the island with USB ports, and when you're sitting at the island, you have all these views, like there's windows and you know glass doors all around you, and you have amazing views. Whereas if you sit at a little desk, you know about this size, you know facing a wall, you really wouldn't have that. Uh, so for me, I thought if I, it was actually kind of John's idea. I thought it was a brilliant idea. Like we talked about it. If if it was us, like we probably pick the island to actually sit at to to do some work if you know need be. It would be nice to not work at all, you know, if you're on vacation, but sometimes you have to. Like, that's how it is with me. I always, you know, take my computer with me, and um, I always have some computer work to do, and it's nice to have a little space to, to sit at to do it. Uh, Georgia Smith says, the desk turned out beautifully. Thank you. Uh, just wondering why you didn't paint the inside. I kind of like the combination of the painted and the unpainted together. Um, it just kind of caught my eye. Now, if that inside would have been like an orangish color, I would definitely have painted it, but it was a nice brown color. And I, yeah, I guess less work, and it just, I kind of like the look of it. And hopefully whoever 
you know, buys it will like it too. And if not, they can always paint it, I guess. Uh, Linda asks, did you have to seal or poly over the transfer? I'm glad you're asking this because I've been meaning to address this in my videos. I keep showing you guys these cool transfers that I do every now and then on a piece of furniture, on a sign or something. Uh, they're so neat and I'll have a link down below in the description box of where I get them. I'm sure there's different places you can get them but I think they're really well priced and I feel like I've almost gotten to know the Pattersons uh, through my YouTube channel here. We've messaged back and forth a few times but uh, really nice people and they have a really nice selection on their Etsy shop of these cool transfers and she did message me and say you really should put a poly acrylic or a, a wax or something over those transfers just to protect them. So I wanted to pass that on to you guys. If you do, I haven't been doing that and I still have the pieces that I've done so far so I can still actually do that. But I'll probably choose, I'm trying to think, you could also do a clear coat, I think. I guess I should have asked that, but I have a spray that I sometimes use when I do a parchment paper transfer and I don't want to use a brush to kind of, you know, brush over my printed design lest it would you know smear it all over the place so I just use a clear spray um, that usually does a good job of it but I think these transfers you wouldn't have an issue with brushing over them so maybe I just apply a coat of polyacrylic or any Sloan clear wax would work too. Uh, Mary Stewart says Mary do you ever find hidden treasures in the old furniture you refurbish lost love letters old money etc. Um, it's funny you ask that because I'm known to like even as a little girl I, I would always dream of just you know maybe digging in the woods and finding treasure like I, I think I probably read too many books on that sort of thing but um, I realize now it, you know that's never going to happen or most likely never going to happen but and then when I started you know I was older and started redoing furniture picking up these old pieces I would always check you know hidden panels I'd even sometimes knock on the sides just to make sure again probably too many books and movies on that sort of thing but I've never found anything of value. I mean, I find some weird things sometimes, but not nothing of, you know, like a lost love letter or money or a treasure or anything like that. But that would really be neat. Maybe someday I'll still find something. Barbara Darling says, Mary, has your cat ever gotten into the paint? Uh, thankfully, no, so far, or nothing major anyway. I think they've kind of brushed against, you know, freshly painted surfaces already where they got a few spots you know on their fur but nothing major. Uh, the bottom comment from that video she says is no negative. Uh, Mary R says I say yes use it it's beautiful. Well thank you for that I appreciate it. I'd love to keep that little desk but I don't know where I'd put it. I'll probably end up selling it at the antique mall eventually. Uh, the last questions are from the spa benches video. She has a couple of them here. Uh, David Hatfield says, a really nice job, thank you. Uh, just because it's just how my brain works, how, what was the estimated cost for this project? And I thought later I should have kind of added everything together. It was kind of hard because I got these cypress boards and I think I paid maybe $24, $25 per board, but I ended up not using them all. I would say I probably used maybe two and a half of them, something like that if I were to guess. So that really was kind of the only expense. I mean, I used some screws, but um, so I would say maybe maybe $50 for two of them. And he goes on to say here that uh, he had looked up what spa benches are, and I've done that too already, $60 up to $160. I've seen even more than $160, but those might be bigger too. But yeah, I'd say if you want to buy one, you'd probably be paying you know, close to $60 or, or twice that. So uh, I felt like I really saved money and I love that idea always. Uh, Jennifer Baker says, quick question, when is your birthday? Um, it is in December, December 17th to be exact. And growing up, I always kind of groaned because, you know, my Christmas and birthday gifts were almost mixed together sometimes. Although I got to say my parents did a good job of making sure that I got a separate birthday gift. But it always kind of seemed like a Christmas gift too, maybe. And you had to wait a whole year then to get anything, you know, because everything kind of came at once. But it's okay, it sure doesn't bother me now. And the bottom comment from that video is Amy saying, Mary, please update the background music in your videos, or better yet, go without and just use ambient sounds. Me, you have my email and I can show you how to do this. Little improvements like this will make a big difference in your videos. I agree with you, I need to change some of my music. It's not that I, I mean, honestly, I use music that I like. Like, I'm probably not gonna stop doing that. Like, I like the, the sound of the music but I feel like I'm just using the same music over and over again in my videos. I should branch out and get some new new music. So uh, this kind of reminds me to do that. So I'll definitely think about that. And then as far as just using sounds, I, yeah, again, I feel like 
using music and videos is sort of like your brand as far as you know how something looks or sounds uh, so I, I have to kind of stay with what fits to my channel I guess but again I want to yeah I'd like to update some of it so thanks guys for hanging out with me I appreciate all of the questions and again all the kind comments you guys leave it does not go unnoticed as always I hope your day is going great and I'll see you in the next video bye